Morgan here for Infinity, and today we're going to be talking about possibly one of the most exciting CNC topics, flatness. I know, I know. Try to contain your excitement. Yeah, I know this may not be the most thrilling video, but flatness is incredibly important and often overlooked, so bear with me. I'm going to do a simple demonstration to show you when it comes into play and why you should care. First and foremost, whether your Onefinity is mounted to a quick change wasteboard frame or just some other kind of bench, the first thing you're going to want to do is put on a wasteboard and run a surfacing toolpath. No matter how flat you think your workbench is, the CNC will always give you the best results when the bed is dead parallel with the Z axis. And the only way to do that is to surface the bed with the machine itself. This becomes increasingly critical as the job gets bigger, especially if it involves the use of profiled tools like roundovers and V-bits, where the depth of the cut will affect the appearance of your design. To demonstrate, I'm going to run the same engraving toolpath on two sides of the same board. One side will be engraved as is on the wasteboard without flattening it first. Then I'll flip it over, and the other side will be flattened on the machine prior to running the engraving toolpath. Now I've already flattened my wasteboard, so to create the effect of an unsurfaced wasteboard, I'm going to make the board a little bit thicker on one side. That's to show that even if your material is flat, you're still not going to get good results if one side of your wasteboard is higher than the other. So to do that, I'm going to send this board through the planer, just slightly shimmed up on one side. That'll mimic what would happen on an uneven wasteboard. Okay, I'll create a vector with a nice little fancy script where the stroke transitions between thick and thin. Uh, that'll do just fine. I'm using a 90 degree V-bit to run this test, and I'm going to zero out my X and Y axes and probe for Z at the center of the board because that's right in the middle between the thickest and the thinnest part. I set the cutting depth to a maximum of 1 16th of an inch, and I chose this typeface because there's a good amount of variation in the width of the strokes. It gets really thin in some areas and wider in some other areas. The wider parts are where the bit should be cutting deeper into the material. All right, the program is loaded. Everything's zeroed out. Let's run it. You'll notice that the engraving is significantly deeper on the right side than in the center, where we zeroed out the z-axis, which completely changes the appearance of the engraving. And it didn't even make contact with the material over on the thin side. So now let's flip it over, flatten it, probe for Z again, then run the engraving toolpath. You see that? The depth of cut and consequently the overall appearance of the engraving is uniform from one side to the other. If you're just engraving a small one-off thing, you might not notice, but if you're batching out a large number of things that are taking up a majority of the wasteboard and it's not flat, it's going to become a real problem. That's why it's super important that you flatten your wasteboard before cutting any projects and flatten your material to the machine, especially on larger projects. And if you've never made a flattening toolpath before, it's super easy. Here's what you do. You're going to need some kind of flattening bit, preferably with a larger diameter. I'm using this two and a half inch diameter flattening bit from Bits and Bits. You can do it with something smaller, but it'll take a while and there'll be more machining marks so you might have to sand out later. Just draw a vector a little bit larger than the size of whatever it is you want to flatten so that it reaches all the way to the corners. Then create a pocket toolpath for that vector and set a shallow cutting depth for the pocket. I try to find the lowest point, zero out my z-axis to that, and take off about 10 to 15 thousandths of an inch. And remember, the larger the diameter of the bit, the lower you'll want to set your spindle speed. It's kind of like if you've ever been on a merry-go-round. If you're standing toward the center as it's spinning, no big deal. But if you're situated closer to the edge, you'll feel that centrifugal force trying to throw you off because the further away you get from the center, the faster you're moving. You'll definitely be able to see where the bit made contact and where it didn't, so if there are any parts of the material that are within your cutting area that didn't get flattened, probe for Z again on the area that wasn't flattened, then run it again. I know it adds a few minutes, but you should be doing this before most any operation on the CNC to get the best results. And here's a little bonus tip for you. You know how annoying it is to have to vacuum up the machine and reach all the way to the back after a cut? You can drop your dust boot, not turn on the spindle, and use that same surfacing tool path to run over your entire wasteboard and vacuum up all the chips and dust. So you're basically making your machine clean itself. That's pretty cool. All right, I know that was kind of a boring one, but believe me, it's important. I just learned the hard way, wasted a bunch of material, trying to batch out a whole bunch of stuff without flattening the material first. Okay, I hope that was helpful, and if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you're the first to know whenever we post new videos. Thanks for watching. Y'all be good.